Hi, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. This is Katie Karlan from Degotion, and we are almost about to start with today's topic. This is a 30 minute series of webinars that we are running every week during the summer. And today I'm going to share with you my screen uh, shortly. We will share our recommendations and hints and tips for you in order to uh, assume a uh, thought leadership role on LinkedIn. So in a second, you will be able to see my presentation. And uh, today's topic, not only are we going to share with you what we see that others are successful in when they are approaching the thought leadership role on LinkedIn, but also how to do it effectively, because we know that all of you are very busy. So that's always the ambition of ours to uh, support you in finding neat and nice ways to save time. So again, my name is Katie Karwan and I'm the CEO of Degotion. Together with my colleague, Liselott Engstam, we are helping leaders and organizations remain successful in leading in the digital age. And LinkedIn is one of our absolute favorite platforms in order to uh, stay tuned in and uh, also positioning uh, in terms of thought leadership for leaders. So that's why I'm, I'm very excited to be able to share today's content with you. Before we move on, I just want you to be aware that you are welcome to enter any questions or comments you might have into the uh, chat or questions box. And when we come towards the end, I will be able to have a look at any incoming questions and I will respond um, within the 30 minutes. And should we exceed the 30 minute limit, I will make sure to respond in written afterwards. This uh, webinar will also be available as a replay afterwards. So in case you want to watch again or refer it to one of your peers, you're welcome to do so. So let's start with the agenda. And before we start talking about the thought leadership opportunities by using LinkedIn, I really want to uh, dive into some of the prerequisites that we see that are necessary in order to uh, be able to approach that type of role. And also we have selected three things that you should do more of as an executive on LinkedIn and three things that you should stop doing if you're an executive on LinkedIn. And of course, there are many, many more things that you could consider, but we have now selected three of each in order to uh, have you maybe focus and, and mm -hmm. also look into your existing um, uh, position on LinkedIn. So even if you are an experienced LinkedIn user, hopefully we'll be able to uh, at least remind you of some valuable tips and hints that you could uh, revisit on your own profile. Then we are moving on to uh, focusing on some key questions that you should answer to yourself in order to uh, kick this off for you. And finally, we want to refer you to uh, some more free resources that are possible to get access to already tonight. And uh, that entails not only LinkedIn materials, but also other digital leadership materials for your inspiration. So I'll come back to that. Now, this is a um, definition of thought leadership that I found on Wikipedia, and it's uh, originating from Forbes by two gents called Russ Prince and Bruce Rogers. And according to this definition, a thought leader can refer to an individual or firm that is recognized as an authority in a specialized field and whose expertise is sought and often rewarded. So you might ask yourself, well, do I qualify to become a thought leader or to be perceived as a thought leader on LinkedIn? Probably the world do not need a lot of new leadership methodologies or philosophies, but it will be interesting for your followers to learn from your experience and how you apply things and how you view things. So either you are looking to attract more talents to your organization, you're looking to, uh, to make keynote speeches, maybe you are looking to inspire your customers even more. Um, also, you could be up for your first or next board position. Um, becoming a thought leader on LinkedIn is, is really helpful in terms of providing digital footprint and demonstrating your expertise in an engaging way. 
So hopefully more of you will step up and uh, test and, and play with this opportunity in order to uh, to be able to inspire more of your your followers uh, moving forward. So let's dive into the prerequisites then. And I'm going to mention five things that you should consider. And let's start with the first one, which is to have an intriguing LinkedIn profile. Now, what do I mean by that? I see far too often that executives are very formal in how they use the title field and also how they use the summary field. And in more than half of the, uh, the uh, examples that I look into, uh, people and executives in particular are really focusing in on the history. So they are listing their credentials and their experiences, and there's very little to actually share what they're passionate about today and also what they have undone in the future. So if you as an executive want to inspire your followers and everyone who's visiting your profile, you should think about how can you share what you're passionate about and where you are heading, and not by disclosing anything that is confidential, but by giving some kind of a guide on what is important to you. And ask yourself, is this an is intriguing profile? So if I were to meet myself, would I be intrigued and, and curious about meeting myself uh, upon a meeting? So that's really important to think that through. So it mirrors what you want to accomplish as a thought leader when you're starting to share your area of expertise more in depth. And then of course, to become a thought leader, um, you, you need to make it very, very clear that you have one area of subject matter expertise. So, it's really important to focus in and niche yourself uh, to uh, make sure that you are not uh, confusing your followers. And this should be something that is inspiring to you that is almost um, impossible not to share from your perspective because you're so strongly attached to um, whether it's a philosophy or it's an experience or it's a new learning or something that you really want to share in order to inspire the people who are following you. So this is a very important thing that you need to consider which area should be your subject matter expertise. And maybe it's a combination of your experience and your talents and what you have undone in your professional life. Thirdly, it's also really important to create trust. And if you're stepping into this, this process, you should absolutely verify your credentials. So you not only need to list your jobs and board positions, but also you need to make sure that you have recommendations and or endorsements which are supporting that. So this is a very important step, of course, to have credibility in terms of assuming that position. And even if you are approaching a new area of expertise, new building expertise, and you might be able to share your journey towards that new expertise of yours, um, make sure that you add all the credentials that you have uh, to support that fully. As a fourth point, the investment of yours is more or less dedicated time. This will take some time. And it doesn't come easily. And I can tell from my own experience and from other people that I work with that, especially in the beginning, uh, to uh, uh, move beyond the, the threshold is quite time consuming. But again, it's important to remind yourself that you decide when you uh, create content in order to assume this thought leader position. And a good rule of thumb is to only write content when you are inspired. And we'll get back to that later on. Then finally, as uh, the fifth prerequisites, uh, we have chosen to remind you about the mindset of being responsive. So when you are creating content and you want to see engagement among your followers and readers, it's really important that you stay alert and engaged as well. So typically you shouldn't leave it for more than 24 hours in case somebody is commenting or, or asking a question or uh, sharing your content. So uh, in that sense, it's really uh, nice if you just 
share, comment back, and maybe there will be a, a longer engagement from, from that. Also, of course, thanking people for sharing and, and helping spread the word uh, is really important uh, on social media and in LinkedIn in specific. So that should not be underestimated. Okay, so those were the prerequisites. And uh, that brings us to the next point. We are looking forward to sharing with you today. Three things you should do more of. And LinkedIn, you can have a checklist of, uh, I don't know, 100 points what, that you can optimize and you can think about how to be perceived by others and so on. But typically what we see is that executives are um, often falling into some traps and we want to highlight three of them for you today so you can benefit from this. So first of all, to make sure that you can stay on the thought leadership track is to make sure that you monitor the trends, articles and discussions within your area of expertise. And this is easier than you think on LinkedIn because there's so much materials and uh, articles available for you. And an example here from the Pulse area on LinkedIn. Uh, this is just a sample. You have hundreds of contributors, influencers, uh, magazines, uh, newspapers, and also by industry, you can search for content within your specific area. So it's important that you acquaint yourself with this area so you understand what is uh, going on and also what is being discussed. And uh, another area, of course, is to take part in groups to understand what is going on inside the groups. So moving on then to the second thing that you should do more of is to think about how you share your content, because you need to create your own content as a thought leader. Not necessarily a new method or a new philosophy, but adding your experience and your perspectives and your questions so you can inspire more people maybe to approach um, a challenge uh, differently. It doesn't have to be, you know, a uh, thousand words or 2000 words article. It doesn't have to be every week, but you should be consistent because your followers will learn uh, your, your style in terms of sharing content. So make sure that you set expectations on how you want to share your content. And as an example, um, I just want to share with you that some people like myself, for instance, um, I do not write articles every week on, on LinkedIn. And still, I'm, I'm writing articles. And this is a sample of, of some of the articles that I have written. And basically, since I don't write every week, what I do is I set expectations about writing articles about a certain topic. Let's say three or five or seven articles around a certain topic. and then there will be a break, a pause, and I will come back uh, later on with a new series of articles. So you decide what works best for you, but in order to be seen as a thought leader, you need to have some kind of expectation management with your followers so they understand what they can expect from you. Then the third thing that you should do more of on LinkedIn is to mobilize your network. And, um, you probably have hundreds of contacts on LinkedIn. Some of you might have thousands of contacts on LinkedIn. Not all of you are great at sharing your content in the different dimensions. And I just want to remind you about this opportunity, which is really uh, effective. So first of all, you can share your article or your content publicly on LinkedIn, so everyone can access it. And you can combine that by sharing it on Twitter if you have a Twitter account, which we strongly recommend that you have. You can also share it, not with the public, but with your connections only. But we do not recommend that if you are assuming a thought leadership role, you should make sure that it's available for anyone searching on LinkedIn for that specific topic. The second dimension is to, of course, share within specific groups which are relevant to your topic. So then you need to do some detective work before and you need to start some engagements in those groups where you can assume that role over time by listening in to the engagement, but also to add comments and share your own content uh, on a consistent basis. And thirdly, you can direct your content to individuals in a very personalized way. Uh, 
So just to remind you about what it could look like, if you have an article or a post you want to share, that this is the opportunity that is given to you by LinkedIn. And you have three boxes you can tick. And you can tick up here, share an update, and then you can just share an update and adding a comment. And here's where you choose public with or without Twitter. Or you can just use a connection if you, if you want that. So what many people are missing is to actually tick off the next one, which is sharing within the group. So where you add the group name. Of course, you need to be a member of that group. And then you can name it with a title, and you can add some details to initiate a discussion in that group just by sharing it in this way. And then finally, at the bottom here, you can tick this box in order to send your content to individuals by adding a name and a message with a personalized uh, message content. And of course, a combination of these three would be the optimal. So you want to share it widely, but you also want to share it to groups and individuals whom you know could be really great at sharing it in their networks so you can get the spread that you are looking for. Let's move on then to the three things that you should stop doing. And uh, I had to think about which one, which three to choose because there are so many of them. But uh, for this specific topic on thought leadership, we, uh, we concluded that these might be the most uh, relevant ones, at least it seemed like that yesterday. So here we go. The first one is to engage in too many groups. We see that all the time that people get overwhelmed by all the notifications and the updates, and it's, it's getting really daunting. And some people are not conscious about the opportunity to really use the settings. Uh, in the top right corner of LinkedIn, you can use the settings. You can actually define if you want any notifications at all from groups, for instance, if you want uh, them on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, or not at all. So you are in charge of that, but you need to make sure that you control your settings. And um, what we recommend is for the thought leadership perspective that you focus in, that you zoom in on those groups that are most applicable to your, to your subject matter area. So you can listen and understand what is going on, what is engaging. And then maybe you will get inspired as well to, to write new content and add to what's going on. And in that way, you can co-create, so to speak, with your uh, group members uh, in order to create content. The second thing you should stop doing uh, in order to, uh, to uh, quickly then assume a thought leadership role is to uh, do it on an ad hoc basis, right? If you show up and do not show up, that is not really uh, professional in terms of uh, expectation management for your followers. So make sure that you find your way either of bulking the articles like, like I do, uh, or if you have a specific time, um, bi-weekly or monthly or, or even weekly, if you're really inspired to, to do this. So you set this, uh, you set the standard and also you get momentum all the time. Thirdly, what you should really stop doing, if this is uh, something that you can uh, recognize from yourself, is to ignore responses to your content. So whenever you get a response in terms of a comment, a like, a sharing, make sure that you acknowledge that and thank people for sharing and, and adding and engaging because this is the, um, this is the strength and the, the, the gold mine of social media and, and LinkedIn in specific that you are rewarded if you have engagement on your posts. If people just like it, that's okay. But if they if they share it, if they engage with it, um, you will benefit from that in terms of LinkedIn selecting your content to be promoted and shared across the, the community. And uh, you might have noticed that LinkedIn will issue weekly updates on which which articles are widely read in your community of followers and why shouldn't your content end up there so again if you stay alert if you respond to to people who are 
interacting with your content, uh, the likelihood for that will absolutely increase. So let's move on then to the key questions. And again, if you have any questions yourself, please feel free to add them into the question box and I'll resume um, that list uh, in, in a short while. I do, did have um, one question that popped up before the meeting as well, so I'll come back to that also. So I've selected five questions for you to consider when you are on this track. And the first one is to actually decide which is your single, only one, area of subject matter expertise. And this is, it seems easy, but believe me, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> it's quite difficult to, to select and deselect at least, deselect um, areas of, of um, that, that could be relevant. And maybe your area of expertise is a combination of several topics. So you need to experiment with that. And, and maybe you need to interview some people who have seen you professionally uh, over time to learn more about how they perceive your unique combination of experience, of talents, and your ambition, which is what you have undone. So this is really important before you get started. So you um, do not end up with the wrong uh, area or, or waste time before you uh, find your tune and, and can, can share content um, by a lot of inspiration. The second question you should ask yourself, how can you get feedback on your content upon publication? Now, I have the advantage of having a fantastic colleague who will always give me feedback on, on my content. And it's really important to get that feedback because we are so stuck in our own limitations or our own terminology. And sometimes we, we actually miss out on some key uh, things that should be part of the content. So, make sure that you have some kind of a sounding board around you in order to create content and get feedback. And uh, um, make sure that maybe you can get access to several different uh, types of, of feedback providers. Normally, of course, it's best to have your ideal clients or your ideal audience uh, in mind when, when you are getting feedback. Um, but make sure that you do not uh, public, um, publicize anything before you have had somebody else read through it. So you are sure that it's understandable and that you uh, uh, didn't miss anything that could be intriguing to your readers that you might take for granted. The third question you should ask yourself is on LinkedIn polls, which trends and articles should you monitor? And probably you do this already. You are subscribing to some of the magazines or influencers on Pulse. Um, if you're not, you should really browse around and, and find the content that you feel are is closest to your area so you can monitor that and, and learn from that. And also, that will probably give you inspiration to add your perspectives and, and comment even more so you can co-create, so to speak, with the content on Pulse. Uh, to get the, uh, the uh, triggers that you need in order to provide content. The next question is, which content from others can you lean on? So again, on LinkedIn, you can search for content on posts. And uh, you can search for anything. Um, let me show you an example here. So I'm, I'm leaving my presentation. And I'm moving into LinkedIn. And I've just added here in the top search field, um, I've chosen LinkedIn posts here as a filter. And then I added the word sustainability and, and as a logical operator, mm -hmm. challenges. So this is just an example of a search you can um, you can do on LinkedIn and there are many, many more searches you can do. And also when you are happy with the search, you can save it on LinkedIn. You probably know that. But here um, to the left, you can see that you have lots of filters. So you can even sh show only the last week's posts on this topic, including the word sustainability and challenges. Meaning that in this case, I got 182 results for this. And then of course I can look into a specific author 
if that is important. Maybe I'm following one of them and I'm inspired by one of them as well. So this is just an example of how you can find people who are blogging or sharing content within the same area as yourself and you can get inspiration from that. And maybe that will also help you um, come up with ideas about new content uh, and maybe you can uh, you can refer to their content and share some new perspectives from, from your experience. So again, you have everything at your hands uh, via, via the uh, functionality on LinkedIn. Let me move back then to my presentation here. And uh, the last question I'm going to ask you, which is maybe the most critical one, is this one. When do you fence time? to create your content. I know time is a big issue for any busy executive and the, <laughs> there's no easy way out here. Uh, what I've seen work really well in the past is people, some people prefer to actually set aside time in the calendar to, to have it done every week in a fixed uh, uh, schedule. Other people strongly believe in only creating content when they are inspired and then they bulk up. So maybe they create like five pieces of content uh, in one go and then they distribute the content over time. So I'm sure you know well your own preference and you can decide what works for you. But it's really important to have focus on this and to make sure that it's uh, something that you are doing. Uh, and as with any new behavioral change and any new routine of yours, you need to have focus and to, to really um, alarm yourself about um, the, uh, uh, the timelines and the, uh, the uh, uh, feedback and the, uh, the type of engagement you're willing to put in. So, so those are my five key questions for you to consider when you are moving on from, from this call. I can see we are almost uh, coming up to our, uh, to our uh, um, time here. We have a few minutes left, so that's really cool because I want to check some of the questions I've got. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going back to, uh, so you can see me full screen again. And uh, I have here one question from uh, yes okay the question is the following what can we do to be part of a pulse trend what defines that hmm very good okay my humble experience is the following because i believe i was part of it once uh, and that was an article which got uh, a lot of spread and it's not happening I don't think it's happening all the time for, for everyone, but it's happening if you have something that many people are sharing and commenting on. So LinkedIn will pick up, the algorithm will pick up wherever there's engagement and many people are sharing. So my best answer to that is to try to create engagement and try to be alert to, to fuel that engagement uh, with your own feedback and responsiveness. And that could help. And adding on to that, I think that mobilizing your network in those three dimensions that I mentioned, uh, that you are also directing it towards individuals who knows you and trusts you and, and, and likes your content that can help you share this is really important. So don't be shy about that. Uh, ask for help. And, uh, and uh, people love helping uh, others on LinkedIn as well. That's a really good question. Thank you for that. Uh, so if you have any last minute question, you're welcome to add that as well. I got one here before the, uh, the meeting started, so I'm going to uh, take that now. The question is as follows. When are people reading content on LinkedIn? <laughs> oh, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Well, my advice to you would be to um, ask yourself if you are part of your target audience, if, if you are an executive yourself who is busy, um, you probably know when you find time yourself. Some people have a routine in the mornings or on the uh, bus back home from work. Other people that I know, especially in the executive um, uh, level, 
would probably spend more time on the weekends in the mornings uh, reading content on LinkedIn. So pay attention to when your ideal clients and when your ideal uh, followers are commenting or are engaging. What is, what is the timing? And maybe you should then make sure that your content becomes available uh, just before uh, before that, or that you are at least alert in order to, to be able to respond. Okay, I get another question here. Um, I think you could jump, jump onto themes and articles in other, in other media and give your contribution if the topic is within your area of expertise. That's a really good point. And this is from my, my peer, uh, Edgar Valdmanis, who is also a, uh, an expert on LinkedIn. So thank you so much for sharing that, Edgar. Uh, that's absolutely right, and uh, I'm afraid my screen is too small now, so I can't share that with you. It would be really, really tiny on, on the screen. But just to remind everyone what it says here, uh, you can subscribe to the themes and articles and other media, and you can give your contribution on that topic within your area of expertise. And over time, you will be associated with that content as well. So again, it's a combination of you being able to create engagement, and that you are sharing content within your area of expertise, which belongs to other people as well. So basically, it's a win-win-win because you get associated with other people's content, and um, the people who created the content will get spread. And also, the people following you will be thankful because you have you have shared something that is valuable to them. So you have made them filter the enormous amount of information coming their way. So um, that's, that's a really good point. Thank you, Edgar, for, for sharing that as well. OK, I can see that time is up here. And I really want to stick to the 30 minutes. But if you have any additional questions or comments to this, feel free to add them after this, uh, this uh, meeting. And um, that leaves me with the following. I'm going back to sharing my screen again very shortly. And I just want to. Um, I just want to uh, share some more resources with you. So it's possible for you to uh, learn more in case you have interest in not only LinkedIn, but also other digital platforms. And this is the Degotion Insight Platform. You can find the link below, degotion.com forward slash insight platform. This is a platform which is free of charge. You can access digital assessments, um, you can access research and recommendations on digital aspects. You can also get access to inspirational interviews with digital leaders. And we have plenty of hints and tips on LinkedIn and other social media and digital platforms. So you're most welcome to uh, join our platform. And finally, that leaves me by saying thank you so much for contributing today. I really like your questions. And uh, also, we are open to suggestions from you on future topics. So we will run these meetings on a weekly basis. And make sure that you let us know what you thought of this, and also if you have any topics that you think we should dive into next time, or the time after that. So with that, I want to uh, thank you all for joining, and I wish you a nice uh, mm -hmm. remainder of the day, and uh, welcome back. Bye.